Today I'm going to make a video showing how I change out the cutter head bearings on this Powermatic Model 180 planer. This planer was built in 1993 and I was lucky enough to get to buy the planer and the bandsaw at the same time. I bought them three years ago. I drove down to Vincennes, Indiana to get them. And this, is, this bandsaw was built in 93 also. And the, the guy I bought them from, his father owned them, bought them new back in 93, and never really used them. So when I got there, I was happy to find them in real good shape. Uh, it's all original paint. And as a matter of fact, I, I'm pretty sure the original, the knives were in it and they were sharp. And, and from what the, uh, the son was telling me, his dad never really used it. So it's, it's quite possible that those knives were the ones that came in it, they were sharp, and the guy just maybe ran a few boards through it or something. So it's, uh, it's possible this planer only had a few hours on it when I bought it. So um, I was real happy to see that. Now when I got it here and, ran, and uh, started it up, the, uh, I, don't, I can't remember if there was a vibration or if it was a, a little uh, noise I was hearing from the cutter head, but uh, since it basically sat for 17 years, I decided to change the bearings three years ago when I first bought it. And it's, it's kind of a process and uh, there's nothing on YouTube showing this, so that's why I'm making this video. So I've already done this one time. I'm gonna do it a little bit differently. The, the, the first time I did it, I pulled the cutter head out through the gear side. This time I think I'm gonna try doing it the other way, um, pulling it out the, the motor side. Um, so what it's doing is I put those bearings in it and I really haven't you know, run uh, a ton of wood through here. I've used it the past three years, but it, ever since I put those bearings in there, it's had uh, kind of like a high pitch whine and I'm gonna start it up here in a minute. The cutter head moves fine. It's, uh, you know, the bearings are working. It, uh, it cuts fine, it's all adjusted right now. Uh, there's almost no snipe to it. I've, um, I just sharpened the blades actually last week and adjusted everything again, so it's, it's running through fine. And I'll run a piece through it here in a minute. But it had that, it has that, wi that uh, wine to it, and I'm not sure what it is. Now, when I put the bearings in, I'll show you the ones I put in it. The original bearing in this machine is, uh, well, I'll get them out here. It's a W307. There's a lot of different numbers for, for it. But here's the original bearing. You can see, see the Powermatic gold paint still on it. It says W30072RS. Uh, it's, a, it's a single roll cartridge bearing. And you know, who knows, maybe I didn't have to replace these, but I did. Um, the machine had sat for so many years and I didn't know if the weight of the cutter had sitting on a bearing all that time um, messed it up, but it, they, you know, they move freely. So anyway, I, I ended up replacing them and I put, uh, I was on a website and there was a fella on there that that uh, suggested using double row bearings and that's what this is here. This is a 5307CZZ. It's a double row bearing and I put it in there and I found out from Accurate Bearing which is where uh, I got these new bearings. These are the number on these bearings or the number is 63 307 LL. They're made in Japan. They were $56 from Accurate Bearing in Addison, Illinois. And here's the new one here. They're, I mean, they're big bearings for this cutter head. They weigh almost two pounds each. So when I put the, when I called them and talked to them at uh, Accurate Bearing, I was talking to a guy there and he said that the, uh, the double roll bearings uh, are only good for I think maybe 5,600 RPM, which is still fine for this machine. This machine, I think the cutter head turns at around, uh, you know, 4,500, 4,800, something like that. So it still worked, but the the original type bearing that goes in it is rated at about 8,800 RPMs. So the only thing I could think that wine is from is that uh, double roll. They're called angular contact bearings that are in it. And who knows, it might be fine for years, but I just don't like that, that noise that uh, 
most planers that I've been around, they just have that, uh, that nice low hum from the cutter head moving. And this one has that whine. Uh, and the thing is, the whine varies. Uh, it, there's no rhyme or reason to it. Sometimes it's real low, you can't hardly hear it. Sometimes when you start it up and it's uh, cold, or even, even when it's warm, it, I can't make sense of it it's real loud sometimes so I just want to go through and I've been thinking about this for a while because it is kind of a big job to change it so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and change them out so I'm gonna start it up right now and see if we can hear I haven't started this all day and the shop is about 60 a little over 60 degrees so we'll see if we can the camera can pick up that noise See now that was that was really low. It doesn't. That sounds actually really pretty good right there. I can still detect it a little bit, but uh, I've done it like that where you can't hear it, and then two hours later you come and use it, and it's it, it's got a high pitched whine. And uh, I, believe me, I, I looked at the belts. I I tried uh, changing out belts. I have two sets there. I thought it was maybe coming from that. The first set of belts I did get rid of because they were sitting in the machine for 17 years, and they were kind of had a memory to them. So, um, let me go ahead and run a piece of wood through here. See now, it's a little bit louder now. So it it, uh, it wasn't really that loud that time either, but uh, um, I'm going to go ahead and change the bearings out, and that's what this video is about. I'm going to show you how I do that. Um, so I'm going to stop the camera and get set up, okay? Okay, I reviewed that last clip I just shot of the planer running, and actually the camera uh, did detect it. I could I could pick it up, um, and especially when you sh when I first shut it down, as it's winding down, you could uh, you could hear that whine. So I'm going to start it up one more time before I start taking it apart because I want to see if I can catch it making, making that noise even, even louder, okay? See, now you, it's louder now. So there, there's two sounds that I'm hearing. I'm hearing that hum from the cutter head, which sounds fine, but I'm also hearing like a hissing noise and believe me I, I thought it was a belt for a long time but it's it's just not so I'm gonna shut it down and see if we can hear it when it when it starts shutting down did you hear that how when when it started winding down you could hear that that hissing so uh, so uh, like I said it varies and that was only uh, this is only about 10 minutes after I started it the first time. So I'll stop the camera and I'm going to start getting set up to take this apart, okay? Okay, here's one more shot just a few minutes after the last one. I want to see if I could, if, if I could hear that again. See, now it's even louder. Okay, Okay, I'm ready to start taking the machine apart. The first thing I'm going to do is take the dust hood off, the belt guard, and the, I guess it's the gear housing on this side. It's held on with a couple of acorn nuts. So I'll take those off and then we'll take a look at it, okay? Okay, the covers and the dust hood's off now. So it's opened up and I'm just going to, what I'm going to do is go through and explain uh, how I'm going to take this out because it's going gonna, it's gonna to be different a little bit different from how I took it out the first time. The first time I did this, I took the cutter head out, the gear side, the drive side, or I guess the gear side. Uh, and in order to do that, I had to move this planer. Now this, this is over 1,200 pounds. I had to move it over and kind of move it on an angle. Um, 
And I was reading online that, you know, actually a lot of guys take it out the motor side. So I'm going to try to do that, and that way I won't have to move the machine. So I think I'll go through and, and um, just kind of explain some of the parts. Uh, this is the pressure bar, segmented uh, um, chip breakers. And then this right here is the bearing, the right bearing housing. Here's the left bearing housing. This has three bolts on it. The other one has four. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove, remove the pressure bar, remove the, the segmented uh, chip breaker, and those hang. There's a, there's a couple. They're screwed into a couple of rings on, on each side that pivot on this bearing housing, and you can see the bearing right there. And I don't know if you can see it, but uh, I have a little magic mark, a mark there on the bearing housing and the bearing just to make sure that that bearing doesn't move. I did that when I first put them in three years ago. So I'm going to remove those, and then I'm going to uh, back these screws out, take this uh, indexing plunger off, take the belts off. And then I'm gonna, I've got to, uh, you know, a lot of guys I think take and they put a pry bar against that. This is the, this uh, pulley or shiv is on the end of the cutter head. The cutter head's machined down to where it could, uh, that, that fits on it. And that drives all the gears through the series of pulleys and, and things. So I think a lot of people will take and try to put pressure on that to, to move it, to move the cutter head out through the motor side. But the thing is, you know, th this bar is pretty beefy. That's like a half inch bar that's bolted onto this bearing housing. But the center, the center of that, uh, that shaft right there is higher than, than this half inch steel bar there. And it's just kind of awkward trying to get pressure on it. And I'd, I would just rather use a puller to try to push that out. So that's what I'm gonna do. I mean, I did put a, I did uh, put a pry bar on there, and I I took out uh, uh, I took out these uh, three bolts holding that bearing housing on just to see if it would move, but it, it didn't budge, and I don't I don't want to put a bunch of uneven pressure on that. So I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off the the drive gears. There's two drive gears here, and I'm gonna take off this assembly so I could uh, get at so I can get at um, the center of that shaft and put pressure on it to move this out. Now, the bearings, the bearings on the cutter head are a press fit. And I'm gonna show you how I do that later on with a press, with a hydraulic press. They're a press fit and the bearing itself is like a slip fit in the housing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the, this pl plunger off Back these screws out, take this off. I have to use a wheel puller to get that pulley off. And then I'm gonna take all these gears and then I'm gonna use this, this puller. I'm gonna take these, these two pieces off and I'm just gonna, you see how that's like an H shape? I'm gonna use that in this and I'm gonna, um, I'll show you when I go to do it. I'm gonna bolt it basically to, to this housing here and that's gonna allow me to put pressure on that, on the center of that cutter head and it's gonna push the cutter head right out. Now, the cutter head bearing on, the, on this side, I, I'm sorry, the, uh, the housing, the bearing housing on this side, I'm gonna back those out and that pulley's gonna be off and that's just gonna go right out with the bearing in it still. But when I put pressure on that with that puller, it's gonna push the, uh, I'm actually not gonna take this bearing housing out. I'm gonna push the cutter head, which is gonna push that bearing out of the, the bearing housing. So that's how I'm planning on taking it out. So what I'm gonna go do now is I'm gonna take out the, uh, the blades. I'm gonna take this off, back these screws out, and then I'll probably start the camera back up. That's all pretty straightforward. Uh, I won't film taking the blades out or uh, taking this off. This is just the Allen, Allen screw. And what I do is I mark everything. Like I, I'm gonna mark 
the distance from that the end of this cutter head shaft is to the outside of this, this um, pulley. Just so everything goes back the same. So I'll take that out and then I'll start the camera back up when I start taking this assembly apart, okay? Okay, I changed my mind. I thought I'd film some of this uh, as I take it apart. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take the belts off. These four bolts are loose and it's a three quarter inch wrench that you'll need. What I do is I just grab these belts and kind of put a little tension on them and I'll tighten these top two. That way the belts are loose now and I can spin them off the pulleys. So that's the belts. Now to the cutter, or now to the blades, you'll need a, a 3 8 wrench on all these gib bolts. And before I take these out, I wanted to measure uh, how high they are above the cutter head surface. And they were 110 thou from the cutter head surface. And uh, I think it's recommended to be uh, 1 8 which is 125. So I sharpened these a few times. And uh, eventually, I was gonna, probably the next sharpening, I was gonna have to move them up anyway. So I just wanted to know where they were. They needed to be moved up. And I probably will make a video on setting them and then uh, sharpening them also. So when I take these out, I didn't know this at first. I, I had a planer before this, uh, 20, a newer 20 inch Powermatic. And uh, I didn't realize it, but you're really not supposed to take out like one knife at a time, go to the next one, take it out because you have all that and same when you go to install them, you wanna to try to even that pressure out because um, if you look at the profile as cutter head, there's a lot of material out. You know, there's three lines where these the gibs and the blades go in. And if you start cranking on these, you're, you're pushing this cutter head kind of out of shape. So the way you're really supposed to do it is to kind of tighten them up uh, all gradually and I start from the inside out and uh, when I loosen them I do the same thing so I'll start and I won't do it all at once so I'll start right here and just take a little pressure off and then I'll move to this one and then this one here and here and I'll, I'll uh, just kind of loosen them a little bit, not all the way, and I'll just move around the cutter head and probably two or three times then they'll all be loose. Um, that's the way I do it anyway. So I'm gonna do that. I'll stop the camera and start it back up when that's all done, okay? Okay, one other thing I wanted to do that I just remembered uh, was to, before I take these blades out was to number the cutter head, blade, and gib assembly. There's three of them. And I, like you can see there are two, two, two and all threes right here. I'm doing that because uh, th th there's almost no vibration to this planer. It runs really smooth, except for that noise that I'm hearing, which I think is from the bearings. But I don't wanna mess up uh, any of the, the weights. If there's, uh, I can remember when I first got it, I messed around with the weights weighing each one of these, these gibs to try to even them out. And uh, I just like the way it's running, so I wanna put these blades and the gib assemblies back in the same way. So, and one other note, you know these, these little adjusters here, there's three of them in each blade. If you ever hear a rattling on your cutter head when it's coming to rest, uh, a lot of times those get loose. So you just take an Allen wrench and tighten those up and just you know snug them up against the bottom of the blade and then you won't hear that rattling. I mean, they'll never come out, but it's probably not good to have them rattle like that. Just snug those up. So I just numbered the, all the blades and uh, I'm going to go ahead and take them out now, okay? Okay, one, uh, one other thing I wanted to mention before I take these blades out is uh, where they sit in the cutter head re in relation to the end. This cutter head is actually 18 and a quarter from end to end, and really so are the knives, although this set of knives look like it might be just a touch over. They're a little bit proud from the end of the cutter head on that side, but they're all flush on this side. When I put them in, I uh, always put them in flush here. Now you see this cutaway in this, uh, the, the hanger there, and there's a little bit of right there where I had to cut. The reason that's in there, and I hated to do that, but I bought, uh, this didn't come with the knife sharpener, the guy couldn't find it. So I bought one from a guy in Florida, it runs great, 
but it's the old style. It came off the old original uh, green Parmatic, which were in the in the 50s and 60s. You see that that color green. That motor is 10,000 RPMs. You see the little pulley on it there, and the big pulley there. This this pulley, it hits. It hit that housing, so I couldn't get it. The whole the whole point of being able to sharpen these in in the cutter head is that you bring that cutter head, you, you put it, you clamp it into here, the, uh, the grinding motor, you bring that grinding wheel all the way over and you've got clearance here, and then you move this to the next blade, and then you go ahead and grind them so, uh, so you can get the blades all at the same height. Well, I couldn't get the thing over far enough that way, and I was thinking, why, you know, they don't give you enough clearance here, but I finally figured out, that the newer style, the newer style of grinding uh, setups that go on on this here, it's uh, the the motor is a 3,400 RPM, so it has a um, has a bigger pulley here and slightly smaller pulley on this side. So the smaller diameter, I'm pretty sure this is what it is. I don't know if any of you guys have the this one as opposed to the other one, but I'm pretty sure on the newer style that belongs with with that planer. The, uh, the pulley is smaller in diameter and it, and it allows you to move that grinder assembly all the way over so the grinding wheel is right in this little gap here so I could move the, uh, the cutter head to the next knife. So that's why I had to take a little bit out there. So that's not going to hurt it. This is still a, a big piece of metal. Um, so like I said, I hated to do it, but that's why you see that, that cut out there. So I'm going to take the knives out next, okay? Okay, I'm ready to take the last uh, knife out. Um, what I did was I loosened those gib bolts up in two rounds. I broke them loose in, in uh, uh, the first round and then, and then uh, the second time through, I loosened them all the way up and pulled everything out. So this is the last one. And again, the reason you wanna do that gradually on each one is so you, you don't have uh, uneven stresses on the cutter heads on, the, on these channels. So I'm gonna pull this one out. and the gib. I'll take them over to the bench. And uh, I, I can see I still have numbers on here. 659, 422. Those are, uh, those are grams. I remember uh, uh, weighing these and trying to get a, com a combination to where they were all kind of equal. Because these vary a little bit. I think I might even ground a little bit off to get them close. But they're all really close. So I want to put them all back in uh, this, the same way. Now I'll pull out these adjusters. I have a pair of tweezers here. I'll pull these out. And I even, this is probably not necessary, but I even mark these. Uh, what order they go in and what number. That one I'm going to have to get an Allen wrench. But I pull these out and mark them and put them um, over by the blade. Okay? Okay, all the knives are out. And you can see some some sawdust laying in the bottom of the channel there. I'll blow all that out when I turn the camera off. But what I wanted to show you, and I want to hope that the, I hope the camera picks it up. As I'm spinning this, and I did this last week when I was trying to figure this out, I'm hearing a clicking as I spin it low, and I'll, I'll be quiet in a minute and see if we can hear it. It's a clicking and I determined it was coming from those bearings. At first I thought it was maybe this stuff, but I even disengaged those gears when I was spinning it. Um, and I have a stethoscope, just a cheap stethoscope. And I, you could hear that when I put that, I'll get it here. When I put that right on there, I, I could hear that that clicking is coming from, um, it's being transmitted through this bearing housing. So I'm pretty sure it's those bearings clicking. Now, everything's smooth. They're not, they're not close to being seized or anything, but I don't, I don't know enough about bearings to know if, if that's right, if that's you know, okay, but I'll spin it again and see. To me, that bearing, it's, I mean, it should be quiet. So maybe that, 
that clicking noise at high speeds when this is underway is causing that high pitched uh, that noise. So I just wanted to start the camera and show you that, okay? Okay, the next thing to do is to pull the three bolts out of the, the bearing housing on the left side. That's a 5 8 wrench will do that. And there's two of the bolts hold this, I guess it's the, uh, the index, the, the plunger. So I'll take those off and then we'll get to this uh, pulley, okay? Okay, I took off the index plunger and I'm keeping the, the cap head screws with it and there's the third one there. So, th so three bolts uh, held that, that bearing housing on. And now it's time to take off the pulley and the in index collar. So there's a set screw holding each. It's a 3 16 Allen wrench. And I, I loosened, I loosened the, uh, the pulley set screw. And before I loosened this one on the index collar, I made, a, I made two marks. What I did was I took a six inch scale and I kind of put it along there and made a pencil mark here and here because that's critical where, where that sits. And I remember uh, three years ago adjusting this um, and I don't, uh, I don't really have time right now to, to go through and, and uh, rehash all that in my head. <laughs> so what I did was I just marked it and then I put a piece of tape between the two marks so when I put this back on, it'll go on in the same spot because as soon as you loosen, as soon as you loosen that, you can see that collar, that collar will move all around, you'll lose your, your placement. So it's important, if everything is working fine when you go ahead and sharpen these blades and do the primary and secondary bevel on those blades, because that's what these are for, these, um, this indexing collar, that's what that's for when you go ahead and sharpen your knives. So now, what else, uh, what I also did was, you can see the shaft in there, the, um, the cutter head shaft. And what I did was I took the six inch scale and I just measured how far in that was and wrote it down right there. And it's 31 30 seconds. So when I go to put that back on, I could set it, um, there's a keyway in there. So I'll, the next step is to put a puller on there and start pulling that, okay? Okay, I was able to move this index collar inboard enough to create a gap here between the index collar and the pulley to get the three jaws of the puller in there. And uh, maybe a smaller puller would even fit in there a little bit better, but I was able to just uh, move this by hand. I'm just tightening this and you can see that's coming right off. So there wasn't, it wasn't on there real tight. So I'll take this off. I could probably take it off by hand now. I have the key weight. That, that fits in there real nice. So I'll go ahead and set, set this to the side. So I have that measurement there, so when I put it back on, I'll, I'll set it in the same spot, okay? Okay, something I just realized is this indexing collar is not separate from the pulley. It's that set screw holds it to the pulley. So I didn't need to back that out. Although that was a good spot to get the jaws. And I don't know if the, they would, really would have worked on this angled surface here. So um, what I'll do is I'll probably put this back into place and tighten that down. But uh, I thought that was separate than this. So if you can figure out a way to get your, uh, your puller on there without loosening that index collar, that's probably a good idea so you don't have to reset that. I just wanted to show you that, okay? Okay, the next thing to do is to remove the chip breaker and the pressure bar. Now, they both pivot upon the bearing housing and they're attached to some, some collars. There's four collars total. And it's a good idea to number them as I'm looking at the front of the machine, just one, two, three, four. I mean, these ones here, I know where they're gonna go because of that, but I, I numbered them anyway. Because I've, I've uh, read accounts of people putting these back in upside down, and uh, it makes it so you really can't adjust the, uh, 
you can't adjust this stuff right because they're in upside down. So it's good, it's good to number them. Now the, uh, the chip breaker, I'm just gonna pivot it up here. It rests on that infeed roller. There's the adjustments for that. And then you can see the bolts holding it together. And there's a guide, there's a, like a tension pin there uh, where it mounts. So you'll need a quarter inch Allen wrench to loosen those up. And then there's, uh, there's some bolts here that hold the pressure bar down. So I'm gonna back those out. So that's what I'll do next, okay? Okay, all the bolts are out of the chip breaker. And I even marked these bolts where they go. I want, I want to put everything back right where it was. You probably don't need to do that. They're all the same size, but I do it. Um, and there was um, some kind of Loctite that was on them. You can see some white residue in there. I, the last time I had this off, I remember I, you know, I had to break that Loctite free um, and when I put them back in, I didn't put any more Loctite on them. They seem like they go in there really snug and um, they were still tight now, so I probably won't put any back, back in when I go to assemble this, but that's up to you whether or not you wanna use that. So I'm just gonna lift this off. And uh, there's no doubt you know, which way this goes. So I'll just set this aside. And you can see there's not much wear to this. Look at over here. Well, I guess the, uh, it's hitting right here. I was gonna say the paint's still on over here, but really the, these ride on the plank right here. So there's still a little bit of uh, paint right here on this one. So there's not much time on this machine. And uh, these all move free. So there's no need to uh, loosen anything else on here. So I'll set this here. And again, I marked all these collars with a grease pencil. One, two, three, and four. So those are just gonna hang there for now. Now the next thing, I'll start loosening these up, okay? Okay, I started removing the pressure bar. There's, uh, there's two nuts on the lower side that jam against each other. And that's how you adjust it. And then the bolt is threaded through this piece. So that's how you adjust it. So I'm just breaking those loose, I'm moving them right down and then, and then I can pull uh, back this bolt right out of there. And I did put a piece of tape on there and make a mark at uh, two inches. I made a little mark on there. And that's just, that's, uh, I pro you probably don't need to do that. All this has got to be adjusted uh, when I set the knives and everything, but that's just to get me in the ballpark. So I put a little mark on there. So I'll back these two bolts out, okay? Okay, the bolts are backed out and now I'll lift up the pressure bar. And you can see there's, there's uh, four more bolts holding that onto those two collars. You can see it moves back and forth. So really what holds this uh, side to side is when you mount these two bolts here. So I'm gonna take my, it's probably another quarter inch Allen wrench and loosen those, okay? You can see the bottom of the pressure bar right there. It looks good. All right. Okay, I've almost got the pressure bar here. I just have to take these two bolts out. So that's that. And again, these screws, they had some kind of Loctite on them, but there's, uh, there's so much like residue, Loctite like residue in there that they, they go in really snug and they feel good when you, uh, when you, when, you know, when you tighten them up, if I remember uh, from last time. So I'm probably not gonna put any more of that in there. Uh, and then you can see the, the collars there. And I had them marked from before, you can see that. So this looks like it's in real good shape. So I'll set this aside. And then these bolts just, they'll stay on there so you're not gonna lose them. So I'll start, uh, start the camera and then figure out what's next. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is remove all the gears and pulleys on this side. I need to remove all this stuff because I need to be able to get even pressure on the end of the cutter head right here in order to get a puller on that, so I need to remove this. And this really isn't that hard to do. I'll show you how to do it step by step. First thing I'm gonna do is pull this, uh, I guess it's like an engage, disengage handle. I'll pull that and then 
I'll pull this uh, pulley and then the, the drive gears and then this cross member and then this little uh, pulley on the end of the cutter head there and I'll do it all step by step. Now before I, I do that, I want to get a measurement uh, I want to get a, a measurement from the end of the cutter head shaft right there to this this uh, half inch uh, bar, steel bar or cross member here. The reason why I want, I want to do that is I want to put this cutter head back in the machine in the same place from side to side. So that's a good way to measure that because this, this uh, half inch bar here is bolted to the right bearing housing which is bolted to the side wall of the machine so that's not going to move so I want to get a distance from there from the uh, inner edge of this half inch steel um, bar here to the end of the cutter head so when I go to put it back in it's the same it goes in the same spot and what I did was I have a, a 3 8 uh, block here gauge and then I have uh, some feeler gauges. And I just put it in there so it's kind of a snug fit. So when I go to put that back in, I'll know exactly how far to put, uh, to put this, this cutter head back in. And the distance of this, I measured it, it's, uh, it's in between 3 eighths. It's a 30 second over 3 eighths. It's in between 3 eighths and 7 sixteenths. So I've got that measurement, I'll set that aside. And then the first thing I want to do now is to take this engage disengage arm off. And before I do that, since I want to put it back on in the same spot, I took a measurement from the, the end here to the end of this, this rod or the, the shaft that it rides on. And it's 930 seconds. So uh, I, I wrote that down or I have it in my head or on tape anyway. And then I'm going to take that off and what you need to take that arm off is a, a 5 30 seconds Allen wrench and there's a set screw right here. So you just loosen this and I'm, I'm also going to get a measurement because that uh, this does have when you go to set this back in this will have play up and down and you got to make sure it goes, uh, it's got to be between the opening on the, on the shroud. So I'll just get a, a measurement right there and it looks like 15 and an eighth right there. So I'm going to stop the camera, mark that, and then I'll, I'll show you how I take that off. Okay, I put a piece of tape uh, down here on the base and then right up on this arm and I made a little tick mark and I measured that, it's 15 and 3 eighths. So when I go to put this back on, I could put it in that same spot because I like where it was, it was centered uh, in that cutout on that shroud. So now, it's just a matter of uh, breaking these set screws. I think there's one on the bottom too. There's this one here. And there's one on the bottom and then it should Oh, as I back this off, you see there's a shoulder here. So, you know, I took that measurement. It was 930 seconds, but what that was, it was just, uh, it was right up against that shoulder. So you really don't have to take that measurement. So this will come off in, in two pieces. It'll, I think there's a key, there's a keyway in there too. There's that keyway. I'm gonna go set this on the bench. So that's what that looks like. I'm gonna set it over here. So there are two set screws holding that in and I'm gonna grab the key weight. So that's the first thing and the next thing I'll do is this pulley here, okay? Okay, now that the engage disengage arm is off, it's time to take this pulley off right here. Now, if I remember right, last the last time I did this, 
There's not enough play in the belt to try to get the belt off around that. And I think what I did last time is slide this out as far as I could and then take these drive gears off. But the, the width of the drive gear, it's, it, I think it just allows these gears to come off. So I, and there's a set screw holding those two drive gears. I took those off and then I was able to get at these bolts um, holding this cross member on. But I, I realized that there's a better way of doing it, I think. And there's a, there's a bolt here and I, there's one on the other side holding this whole assembly together. And it's adjustable. If you can see that there's some, there's a, a slot here and this can stand to go up about um, probably three quarters of an inch, which will give me enough slack to take this off. There's one more, there's a bolt on the other side. So there's only two bolts holding that assembly and it looks like it's fully adjustable. There's a bolt here and this whole assembly, I know it's kind of dark, this whole assembly is all the way down, is, is just sitting on that bolt basically. So when I loosen that up, I'm gonna loosen this one and I'm going to loosen the other one and it should give me it should give me enough play to take this off because if I remember these were these just barely had enough clearance to come off and I guess I just didn't see that last time that it's possible this to uh, to loosen this assembly here and gain some slack to take this belt off so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to loosen those up and we'll see how much slack we get and oh before uh, before I do that or be, yeah, before I do that, what I did was I, I took a measurement. Let me see if I can get the camera in here. From from the bottom of this, uh, here I'll just hold it out here. I took a measurement from the bottom of this assembly to uh, a mark right here. So when I when I uh, put it back together, it'll be in the same spot. Okay. Okay. I loosened the two bolts up, and now it's free. And they weren't they weren't really that tight. I mean. Um, it wasn't hard to loosen them up. So you can see that there's play here now. And again, th there's a slot in here. The, uh, the bolt on the other side, this assembly, is zeroed out. So it's, it's hanging on that bolt basically. So uh, that'll be easy to put back together. I'll just uh, put, you know, tighten it up and then get my distance here and then tighten that back down. So I'm gonna lift this up as much as I can. You can see the slack on the belt. And then I'm gonna just spin this and spin that belt right off of there. So that wasn't hard at all. I don't know why I didn't see that last time. So that's that, I'll stop the camera for a minute. Okay, now with that belt off, I'm gonna slide this, this pulley and gear right off of here. There we go. Everything's you know well greased. I just greased it last week. Everything. There's a brass bushing in there. That looks good. Like I say, I don't think there's there's. I think this is basically like a brand new machine. I mean, it's like finding new old stock. Nothing's wore on it. It's all. I don't think it has much time on it. Okay, so that's a lot better than last time. So now, what I'm gonna do, now I can spin these gears. And what I'm gonna do is, let me uh, take these gloves off and I'll stop the camera and I'll start it back up and explain something. Okay, it's time to pull these drive gears off. And what I did was I measured the distance from the very outside edge of this, of the gear to the end of the shaft on both of them. And I also marked it, this is, uh, I marked it south and north for this because I want to put them back on the same spot. So you can see that th this, uh, the shaft is set in just a little bit from the very outside of the, uh, of the gear. That's 50 thou and that's 29 thou. And it looks like it, this one can stand to come out a little bit. It looks pretty close to that, that cross member, but I, I put my, the six inch scale in there and there is separation. So it, it's, it hasn't been hitting it. So I'm gonna back this Allen screw out right now. 
And there's only one way that these can go back on because there's the keyway there. So that comes off real nice. Make sure I get the keyway. There it is. So that was easy. We'll check the other one. Yeah, there's not much clearance from that bolt to the in inboard edge of that this gear. Ah, this one I'm going to have to stop the camera and I'm just going to have to nudge it. It's probably not on there very very uh, hard. Okay, I just uh, put the puller on it and I just snugged it up a little bit, and uh, I'm sure this is just going to walk right off when I. There it goes. So I'll I'll continue taking that off. Okay. Okay, both gears are off, and now it's time to pull this mount. It's just a 916 wrench. There's there's two bolts on the on the back side and one on the front, so this can only go on one way. So you don't have to mark anything here. And when I looked at uh, at this metal here, it it did look like that. Uh, like that gear might have just been barely touching that. I'm gonna move that outboard just a little bit when I put it back on. You can see the hole right there. That's where the grease comes through. Set that down. Okay. Okay, the next step is to pull this little pulley here on the end of the cutter head shaft. And this belt is long enough and the pulley on the bottom is big enough to where I could just kind of move this over and, and take that off of there. And then, uh, there's a set screw there. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the camera, measure that, and then pull that. Okay, I measured that. The shaft sticks out 5 ths from the edge of this pulley. So I'm gonna go ahead and break it loose. And that one's on there, so I think I'm, I'm gonna put the uh, puller on that one, okay? Okay, I have the puller on it. You can see I had that off a few times the last time I did it. You can see those marks in the set in the uh, set or the keyway browning. Okay, so that's that. So I'll stop the camera and figure out what's next. Okay. Okay. The next thing to do is to set up a puller on this side of the cutter head shaft and before I took this all apart I thought that this bolt down here was directly under this one and that way I could put the uh, the puller over that but it's not but um, this one here and this hole here are real close um, to lining up so that so what I did was I put a threaded rod in uh, I, I took the bolt out or the cap screw out of here that's a 7 16 threaded rod and I put that in there and you can see it actually coming through uh, the inside there uh, and then I put a this is a 3 8 threaded rod on on this side and then I put a couple of washers and the nuts on there so I'll go ahead and grab my puller I took the these jaws off of there so now I can put that on there and tighten that up. 
So I'll stop the camera for a minute and I'll see how she goes, okay? Okay, the next thing I wanna do is I wanna put this two by four, this block, under the cutter head and just snug up the table so that the cutter head supported. And I'm just gonna uh, go ahead and explain what's gonna happen here. First of all, this bearing housing, here I'll take these off for a second just so you can get a better look of it, at it. This bearing housing is gonna stay put. So when I start pressing this, the cutter head out, it's gonna take and press this bearing out of the housing. Now I might have to take a heat gun and warm this up. I think I'll probably do that anyway. It's a good idea to warm this uh, house up, the, the, or the bearing housing. And so the, this bearing housing is gonna stay put. The bearing's gonna come out. The bearing will stay on the, uh, the cutter head because it's a, it's a press fit. And on this side, and I'm gonna slide these back over. And then this side, these have to come over. They're all still in line. You get a better shot of what's going on here. So this housing and this bearing is gonna, it's, it, the bearing's gonna stay intact in the housing. As I press this out, there's nothing holding this housing in since the, the bolts are gone. So this whole thing's gonna come out. So the cutter head will come out with the bearing and housing intact and just the bearing on this side. And one last thing I wanna do before I do uh, start pulling this is just to uh, keep in mind where this bearing sits in here. And it's pretty much flush with the edge of the bearing housing. On this side, it's sunk in probably about a 16th of an inch. And I do have a shim in there and I'll explain that when, once this comes out. Because these bearings are supposed to go in the bearing housings with a slip fit and a lot of times people put Loctite in there. So what I'm gonna do is, I'll leave these over here. I'm gonna put that, this two by four, underneath. And I'm gonna get it so the channel is kinda hitting that two by four instead of the round. So that's just barely hitting the two by four. So the next thing I'll do is, I'll probably, well I'll have to, let me think about this. I'm gonna have to move these to heat, to heat that up. Let me see how it goes, I'm just gonna, uh, I changed my mind. I'm gonna back this off. Take the two by four out. I'm gonna slide these back over and I'll heat it up and just break the bond. I won't take it all the way out and then I'll put the two by four in. So I'll get set up for that, okay? Okay, I put that heat gun and warmed that, that bearing housing up. I only warmed it up for a few minutes. Uh, it went up to about 120, I think, with my laser. And uh, I put a little pressure on here and I felt that, that nudge. So let me put the camera down there by that bearing. Let's see if we could, uh, you know what, I'm gonna have to hold it. I'll just try to get a shot of it here. But it moves, it, it's gonna move. It was a 16th uh, of an inch set in. Now you can see it's appearing, it's coming out. So that wasn't hard at all. And I was, I was looking, this, this was lined up real nice and straight. So that's not gonna be bad at all. And you'll see that white there, that's, I'll explain what that is when I get it out. So I'll keep working that out. I'll get it about halfway out and then I'll put this, this um, two by four under it, okay? Okay, I slid all the rings over and I put the two by four under it and snugged it up. And you can see the bearing housing as it comes out. And one thing I wanted to do, oh, I guess I was gonna say, I, was, I wanted to mark this, but I know where it goes because of this, the witness mark from that, the uh, plunger housing. But you can see it spinning there. So that's coming out the way it should. And I'll continue to, if you watch this right here, 
so nothing should drop because it's on that 2x4. So you see that, that white, that's a shim that I had to put in there because this housing was a little bit bigger and the and I've I've actually read read up on this and I've heard I've heard that from other guys saying that the bearing you know it, it was not it was not a press fit or a um, what do they call that it's not a slip fit it was just loose in there and if you didn't do anything there you're running the risk of spinning this bearing inside that housing building up heat and then you know damaging a lot of things so so I, what I did was, I took, let me explain real quick, I took uh, this stuff here, it's like wax paper, it, my sandpaper, uh, my file sheet sandpaper comes on this, and it's shiny on one side and kind of dull on the other, it's basically like wax paper, but it's about three thou thick, yep, right there, and uh, I spray glued this on that to get a nice snug fit and it worked fine and I might have to do that again. We'll see how that new bearing fits in there. So that's what that's about. It, it worked. <clears throat> this side, if I remember, was a pretty good fit. Am I out? Yeah. Yep, the bearing's out. Okay, let me stop the camera and I'll kinda, well, I guess I could do it. I'll take this. Take this off. I got to kind of snake these out. those go I'm gonna set set these over here it's a pretty big hunk of metal So there she is. I'll stop the camera and kind of regroup and figure out what to do next. Okay, well here's a shot of the machine. I just took that cutter head out. First thing I'm gonna do is clean out the, the inside of that housing. And I'll show you a shot of this. This looks real good. And then the next thing will be to pull this bearing off and pull this housing off. I'm gonna put the wheel puller on that and I'll show you. Uh, shot of when I do that okay okay so I cleaned that that right bearing housing up and this is one of the original bearings and I'm going to show you how this fits see that it's it almost seems looser than a than a slip fit because I can rock it back and forth and get some play in it And the, the new one, I already put it in there, it fits exactly the same. See that? So I'm probably going to use that. So that tells me if I was able to get, if I was able to get that, that wax paper, that shim, all the way around it, which I was, you know, that's a total of six thou, thousandths that that's off and that held that bearing in check so I'm I'm, I'm probably going to do the same thing uh, so the next step is I'm going to pull this housing off I'll get my gear puller set up and pull this off and the the housing should come away from the bearing before the bearing comes off that shaft so we'll see how it goes okay okay I have the puller set up on uh, the left bearing housing and I put a little tension on it and it moves, so you can see it's walking right out of there. It's 
So that seems to me like that's a, what you would call a slip fit. No, a proper one anyway. I think I did, I think I did use a little uh, Loctite on this. There's evidence of it. Okay, so there's the bearing. I'll clean the inside of that housing up and then I'm gonna pull this bearing off. Okay. Okay, I'm ready to pull this bearing. I put the, the gear puller on it. And you know, the only places you can really get those jaws are on this outer race. And um, I, I put pretty good tension on it and it didn't budge. And uh, I can't remember how I, how I took the, uh, the bearings off the last time I did it. I would imagine I used, I used something like that. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I took the, the shield off and you can see that double row of bearings in there. And I'm gonna take, I'm gonna try to take these out and I'm gonna try to put some heat on that inner race to expand it and then put the pullers on it and pull it off. That won't, you know, do any damage to the, uh, to the shaft. Hopefully I'll try to um, not, you know, not heat up the shaft also. I'll, I'll try to pour the heat on, the, on that inside of that race. So I'll see if I can get these bearings out and expose that inner race a little bit. Um, I mean, this, this bearing, I'm not gonna use it again, so it doesn't matter. I'm gonna damage it, get, get it off here. I just can't remember how I did that originally when I took these ones off. There are some marks. Yep, I can see it. There's marks there, there, and there where, uh, where those jaws, they kind of wrap around. So I, I probably did the same thing and I tried to heat it up. So I'll try to take those bearings out and I'll get my torch out and try to heat this up and see what happens. Okay, I started taking this, this keeper out. So those bearings are getting, those ball bearings are gonna come out. This will give me, even if I can't take that inner row of bearings out, this will give me room to put a little heat on that inner race. There's that. That's probably all I'm gonna be able to do. I thought those balls were gonna come out, but. Okay, so I'll put a little heat in there. Maybe I'll put some, I'm gonna put a tin foil shield to get a little bit of a gap between the tin foil and this, and I'm gonna to try to put some heat in there. Okay.